Good day everybody and welcome to Kampala Road. The subject of this video is repairing one of these to my channel. Uh, just a quick backdrop to why these locos need repairing. I had 53 locos arrive from Papua New Guinea. I used to live there and still have associations there and um, my layout arrived. It took nine months to get here and it went via Australia. Everything electrical that arrived was stuffed up basically including the 53 locomotives or 52 of the 53 I should say. 53 locos arrived um, 20 of those were Ringfield which I've consigned to the top shelf and won't be fixed. That's Paxo. Uh, 33 are the can type more modern uh, locos. 32 are or arrived not working. This is Bulladai. Uh, she's the older style um, Backman locomotive, eight wheel pickup. Backman got it wrong, whereas Helden got it right. They pick up from two closest wheels and either bogey, whereas they should have picked up from the two furthest apart wheels to allow for better operation over junctions and points, etc. Still, I do have a couple on the layout that run fine. There's no real problem, uh, but obviously will further apart picking up is better. Do I do this one or do I do the class 50? If I repair this one, that's 11 class 37s available to run on the uh, Kampala Road layout. If I do the 30, uh, sorry, the 50, that means that'll be the fourth 50 available to run. There is an extra problem with this 50 Achilles. Uh, my son, who was then age three, dropped it Papua New Guinea back in 2013-14 I think uh, which means it's in a million pieces <laughs> and badly damaged right so having opened the box of Achilles you can see there is an immediate challenge she's not very healthy first of all the PCB is missing um, no, this is a very early Hornby class 50 with the faulty PCB so that's no great shakes it has to be replaced the faulty PCB DCC it wouldn't work basically Hornby found out and replace them free of charge if you uh, got hold of them this bogey has completely been removed um, you can see here there are tires on the leading and rear wheel that was before the manufacturers uh, were confident enough they didn't need tires uh, but the pickups here are fairly badly tarnished and corroded, you can't see them very well, have to be pulled apart. Worm drive with seized bearings on each end, which I'll pull apart and show later on. But the real problem here is the body is badly damaged, um, where it was dropped. Not only that end, but this end too. So if I repair this, and you can see fingers have been pushing through <laughs> the louvres. Dear oh dear. Uh, some missing there. They're in the box. If I repair this, I think a um, decision would be taken to try and find a new body. Um, even if you stick that, it's going to show. So. Yeah. Uh, the other big problem is, of course, the motor is absolutely sea solid. That cannot be turned. And that's what I'm talking about, this corrosion problem within all my locos that arrived. So I need some spare parts. I have got some, I should say. I've got a new motor. Uh, I have a PCB. Um, there's a buffer missing here. I've got buffer set for this locomotive. I did order them when, I, when he dropped the local I did order them, um, and, but I've done nothing in the last five years of it. Okay, so as you may have guessed, decided to do the class 50. New PCB. Uh, some buffers, which I need one of. More importantly, the new motor, X9242, and it has the new cradle stays inside as well. 
I'm not sure what that is for, maybe it's a slightly different design. It also has the drive shaft, one set of drive shafts in there for one side. Strange. Um, which is quite useful actually because this is the old drive shaft that came out of the loco and there's a sleeve to go on here. The Hornby drive shafts were four parts. Not sure why, Vitrains, Helgen, blah blah blah. It's just a drive shaft basically, but this is, has a knuckle here, part of the drive shaft, a sleeve that goes over, and then another knuckle at the end. Complex. Maybe that's why it gets a smooth running. The other thing here um, you may just be able to see is the Hornby Class 50 um, service sheet, which you can get off their website. Um, the issue I have, it's very clear, uh, but the issue is there's no wiring diagram, and that could be a problem. The problem being, <laughs> where does each wire go? I think it's fairly simple, but um, maybe a bit of trial and error. The other thing I can do is pull apart another Class 50 Loco, get the body off, and uh, see what is under that. Hopefully that will help. So where to start? Um, I think we'll, what we'll do is we'll strip down this to get the other bogey out. Then we'll take the bottom plate off each bogey, get the wheels out, and uh, have a look at the condition of the pickups and clean the wheels. I'm not going to do this on camera because it will just take too long. This is going to, <laughs> knowing me, take me days. But uh, I'll do a bit, update, do a bit, update. That's how I will uh, show this on camera. Okay, to take the base plate off, you force the screwdriver under there gently and that reveals the gears. You can then pry apart the edge of the bogey and because there's no soldering, and the wires are disconnected anyway, you can see here the pickups. Some dust and dirt and hairs in there, but uh, the pickup is done by the axle. There's a lot of dust in here, uh, so it needs a good clean anyway. Uh, and then the axle slots in each hole, and they don't look too bad. They don't look too corroded, but they are dirty. Uh, good. Bit of a scrape, bit of a clean. And we shall do that for all of these uh, parts, the wheels, the axle, etc. But um, compared to some of the other logo, the logos I've repaired, she's not too bad. There's hope yet. I mean, taking the wheels off, this is incredibly dry in here too. So, If she was made around 19, oh sorry, 2004 or 5, I guess, not sure. There's obviously been no lubrication. I certainly haven't done it since I owned her. I think I bought her in about 2009. Yep, need some lube. Let's get on with cleaning these bits. So I've scraped away uh, a lot of the tarnish from the brass pickups where the axle ends go in. And I'm just cleaning them with some fluid, lighter fuel I use. The only reason I use that is because I've watched somebody else on YouTube use it. <laughs> I'm no expert. And uh, just, what I'm gonna do now is put a cocktail stick in these holes with a bit of paper to try and clean as best as possible inside where the actual end of the Axle makes contact with the pickup. And all should be merry. I also have to put some fabricate some new wire onto the pickup. And in fact, it's in focus, I'll take that off, that clip.
the old bit of original Hornby wire which is about as thick as a hair and it is tarnished but not too bad I'm quite pleased with the condition of this there you can see it's still bright I can just pull off this and have a look at the pickup in its entirety there so you can clean from this side as well to try and get inside where the axle rotates okay we'll give that a go that's the other axle, the other side of the axle done pick up I've scraped with the screwdriver to get the tarnish off I have to say it does seem to be very well made um, normally when you look at uh, pickups they wilt <laughs> just by looking at them but these are solid very very well made um, I'm going to do the wheels now and reassemble and do the other one to get the second bogey out we need to get uh, this fan drive mechanism off which means we can pull out the motor at the same time discard that and because there's no wires connecting this bogey on because they're broken uh, that should just drop out he says Okay, so that should just drop out. I'll have to pull the what's it drive shaft out with it. Doesn't want to come. I'm going to have to take the top of the gearbox off, which is this bit here. Where my thumb is. If I can unclip that the gearbox should come out. Let's give that a go. She's fairly loose. Now I have that missing from the other... Basically it sits over the worm drive cover. It is a worm drive cover, sorry. That is missing on the other side, so I'm going to have to fabricate something to hold the worm drive in, but we'll worry about that later on. So now that should come out, and it does. And there is the worm drive hanging forlornly. Let's get on with this first, and we'll come back to this. So there are the two completed and repaired bogies. Well, I hope so. Um, we shall now move on to extracting the motor, putting the new motor in, and seeing what else there is to do with those wires, if hopefully they're okay, to fit the PCB. Okay, that's the drive shaft. This little, uh, I'm not sure what you call it, it's a separately fitted part. It has to fit in there. Same on the other side. Hornby drive shafts come in four bits. I've said it before. I don't understand why, I guess they thought that uh, it aided smooth running and these 50s are renowned for their smooth running. So that's the old motor. That's interesting, this is a new motor, it comes with new sleeves uh, which don't have the knuckle in the end, they're in the bag. It's missing this, whatever you call it. So if you'd ordered your parts and uh, hadn't ordered some new ones of these you'd be stuck which is interesting so uh, what happens is the motor goes in there the end part one and two of the drive shaft go into the end of the motor and that slips on to part three and four of the drive shaft in one way so you have to spin it till it fits and then obviously it locks, so it drives the worm. Um, and that's the problem when you're putting it all back together again, trying to get this to align. On the 31 it's a complete nightmare. It looks like it's easier on this one because there's more space. Right, motor in. Very easy. Just slots in with two new rubber brackets. 
So before we uh, attach, sorry my hand is in the way here, we need to look at the worm drives. Hopefully that is in focus. Now the worm drives, uh, I've learned from experience, seize on their, inside their, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> Bearings. And I'll demonstrate that. Okay, what we have here is the worm drive with two bearings, one at the end here and one here, entering the drive shaft. The worm drive spins inside these, has spindle spins inside these brackets, uh, bearings. This one is free. And I'll demonstrate in a minute where that sits. This one is completely seized, it doesn't turn at all. So we've got to try and loosen that one lubricate and then you're home and dry. Now when these are working properly the worm drive sits on top of the gearbox tower. Let's just move that a bit. So the worm drive sits like this. The bearings sit snugly inside these four plastic pins and you're meant to be able to spin the worm drive in there. Now I'm turning that, it won't spin, but the bearings are turning inside the tower. So it needs releasing. So if I can get that out again, there, that bearing's okay. So I'm going to clean those up, loosen this one, Put some Pico Super Lube on and then some Vaseline. And I'll do it for both of them because they're probably both in the same condition. Okay, the second one was far more difficult than the first one, it's really seized, but what I want to point out there is a washer just here. Don't lose that. Just keep it on and grease it up. Okay, they're both done. They're both spinning. This one's got the sleeve on already. Um, now, this is the issue I have. This is the worm box, the worm drive cover. I've only got one. You have one? No idea. Maybe it's back in PNG. I'm going to have to make something to sit on top here temporarily to stop this worm drive jumping out. So I'm thinking until I get a new one of these temporarily glue, uh, cut out a square of plastic card and stick it on the top. may have to have some height things here because that is slightly higher than the top. I'm just looking here, yeah. It's not as easy as just sticking a flat piece of cardboard on there or plastic, it's uh, a little bit more complex than that but we'll do it and it should hold. Right, not the neatest job in the world, but it's going to work, trust me. <laughs> so these are two plinths, if you like, stuck with super glue on the end, on these. And I intend to, once the bogey is in place, I will put a cap on to stick. And that should stop anything jumping out. Uh, it's temporary. It's to replace this. I appear to have misplaced. I don't think I've lost it. I've, it's in a box somewhere in the house. <laughs> I'm not going to go look for it now. Um, but I'm not going to stick that on because if you remember I had trouble getting this off before it was in place. So I will stick that on once the bogies are in place inside here. Um, which I'm going to put together now. And then we've got the exciting part of trying to get the PCB to work, which will be interesting. And that's where I might throw my hands up and give up. So I'm switching to wobbly cam. You can see the two wires come up through a dedicated hole in the chassis. There and there. And if I shine a torch in there, you can see the gearbox. Oops, that's not very good. 
Maybe that's not so good. And now I have to try and get those two white things stuck on top there. Put the worm drive in, stick the two white holders on top, then put the cover on. And then we're off and away on this side. Second mistake, I put the motor in too early. You must attach this to the motor on the, the absolute pain in the ass. It's the only way to describe it. Um, I've done it several times and I'd forgotten that you must attach these to the motor first. It is incredibly difficult if you don't. Okay, it's relatively simple. But now you've got to marry up these with the one inside attached to your worm drive. That is a little bit fiddly, there's no doubt about it. Um, you can see the housing I've put on top there of the worm drive. On this side, the original part is fit, fitted in there, it's quite dark. Not sure if that helps here a little bit. They hold the bogies in basically, and because I haven't got the correct one on this side, the bogey is flapping around in the wind. <laughs> so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful until I do get the right part. But that is fiddly. Uh, but as you can see, the motor is turning and turning the worm drive. The worm drive is turning the gears and the gears are turning the wheels. So it's getting a bit dark in here. Um, fan is on, but not connected with the elastic band. The motor is hooked up now to the uh, PCB, and I know I realise these should come from the underneath, but <laughs> it's a damn sight easier to put them in through the top. And I've got four wires here, originally from the Hornby model. That uh, is the assumption is that's the lights. These are the pickups, the new wiring in from the pickups. So I'm making the assumption that they go on the end ones. Now, believe it or not, I've opened up two of the other 350s I've got. They've all got different PCBs. None look like this one. Well, the two I've opened up have got different PCBs themselves, and this is the third one. So I haven't opened up Superb, which is the other one I've got, um, which I put a TTS decoder in. So same on this side, four original wires and the pickups. So I'm assuming again that the pickups go left and right. And then it's a guess where the lights go. Uh, as I said, on the service sheet there's no wiring diagram and there's no indicators as to what goes where. And on the underneath there's no indicators as to what goes where. Although you can see the PCB on the other side, the, the uh, connections. And that's why I'm assuming the outside ones are for the pickups. So I've put a uh, old decoder in. And she's quite a good one. Pretty nice acceleration. It's on, it's on, on, no sparks yet, power's on. So let's power up and see what happens. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. So I've got something wrong. I'm going to have to find out about this wiring. Back in a moment. With the benefit of trial and error, the power from the wheels goes into the middle two pins on this particular PCB. It took me a while, but I worked it out. And I'm pleased to say we have action. And in true Hornby 50 style, they run extremely well. I was a bit adventurous putting the fan on straight away. It's the last thing to go on. You need room for your fingers and thumbs around the PCB. But uh, yeah, she's turning extremely well, very, very slowly. As with 
the other 350s I've got. Now I should say, this is my 450 and it's four different PCBs. I check the other three, none of them match up with this one. Now I've had a quick go at getting the lights working, I can't work it out, so I'm just going to go off camera and try again. Very, very uh, awkward and I don't know whether I've got a fault with the LEDs. It may not be working because it was dropped, I've got no idea. Oops, a bit of a stutter there. One thing I will point out, these black connectors, uh, again they're forcing a touch type connection. I'm probably going to solder the wires directly to the PCB, but I'm only going to do that once I've got the lights working. That may yet defeat me, because I've tried for a while and I've got no response from the lights. Moving on from the lights, um, getting a bit frustrated with it. I've tried every combination, it doesn't work on the PCB. So I'm a little concerned either the LEDs don't work or the PCB is wrong. Right, so a new louver in. Uh, it does clip in, but it also clips out. <laughs> so I've put some glue on, and that's what she looks like on the side of the loco. Um, I'm not sure why I'm expending so much time on this, but uh, it needs a new body. But anyway, I just want to see it work. Let's keep going. Quick interlude from the body. I have been investigating why I can't get the lights to work. Now, the Hornby maintenance sheet shows the uh, PCB as X9235M stroke 1. The number on this one is X009R6. This is what they say is the class 50 PCB. Now that looks nothing like all four PCBs I've got <laughs> in the four locomotives I have. For a start it has the plug end and as you know from my video this do not, these do not have plugs which would make it very simple. So it's an uprated PCB um, and there's nothing else on the uh, sheet to say any different PCB. So I'm going to have to delve in and find out what the correct number is for the early models uh, class 50. This is obviously uprated for the later models. Um, so I'm not going to get the lights working on this fix but I am going to get the loco running. New buffer going on. It is sprung, sprung loaded but not weathered. At this stage I really don't care, <laughs> just going to stick it on. Uh, just a pointer, if you are having trouble with your lights on your 50, your body clips in and has to touch these two connectors here. You can see two brass connectors, I'm shining a torch. You have to make sure they're not pressed in against this bulkhead. So you have to uh, just ease them out slightly like that. I learned that from a Susanna Joachim video. She did an overhaul of a 50 as well, a couple of years ago, I think. Um, not quite as in bad nick as mine. But yeah, if you're having trouble with your uh, lights on the loco, uh, the header board, um, have a look at those things. Mine look fairly badly corroded. Those two little brass uh, plugs there are what touches the things I've just shown you, the lugs I've just shown you, that's what causes the problem uh, and Susanna pointed that out on her video. And it's very very simple to fix but it's a frustrating problem. Um, similar with all these early sort of high-tech Hornby Locos, high-tech, high detail, whichever way you want to call it. Anyway I'm going to glue the cracks, see how well I can do with that and then put the body on. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll get the lights working because it looks like I've got the wrong PCB. Body on. Uh, no ladders. In fact, I've got one there. The other three are missing. 
So PCB, ladders, new body. <laughs> Throw it away and buy a new one. The crack is there, so it's noticeable. Um, and the new louvre, louvre. Just move it gently around. Oops. Is green, as you can see. So maybe a bit of paint job. Anyway, um, I want to put some vacuum pipes on the front. Dig those out from somewhere. Uh, I do like these. These are really cool. Um, yeah, put some vacuum pipes on the front, make it look a little bit uh, realistic. Unfortunately, I've given up on the lights. Unusual for me, but I think I've got the wrong PCB. Let's put those pipes on and put on the track. Right, in summary then, um, I have soldered the power wires to the PCB, that's given much better performance. I was having a little bit of problem with, uh, on corners, obviously the wires were flexing inside the body and she was stuttering. So I knew what that was, touch mechanisms don't work, and I've soldered it up. And now she's running perfectly. I have to remove the uh, fan system, you can hear a noise, it's causing me a little bit of a problem. I will take the fan off and stick it to the roof. Uh, I think it's seized up and, and basically not working particularly well. Was it worth it? Probably not, but I've got it working, I'm happy. Um, need a new body, and I'll have to look out and find out what the new PCB is. So if you've got this far through this video, I'm sorry it's not completely 100% fixed. Uh, but she's on the track, she works really well, she runs very, very smoothly like the Hornby 50s do, and she's joining her sister on the layout, and here comes her sister. Superb. Let's focus there, not on the 47. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, sorry if this is a bit long. It's given you a, an overview of what uh, these locos are made of. They are very, very good once they're working. And uh, I just have to tie up a few loose ends, major ones. <laughs> but um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, sorry, no real running sessions, but um, from Campala Road, cheers for now. <laughs>